you guys welcome back to our channel today is another bible study with us and today we have titled this bible study finding worth in god's word and basically what this is is we have kind of went through and found several verses of the bible that bring us back to reality when we're feeling down on ourselves stuff that helps reassure us that we are worthy and god loves us and we were here we were put here for a purpose and those are things that we need reminding of often. So we just wanted to share with you guys um, some of the verses that we found. And we also have a few quotes to share with you guys. So we are just going to jump in and read some of those scriptures and share some of our thoughts on them and possibly some personal experiences. So let's do it. Let's get into it. So the first verse is Isaiah 64, 8. But now, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. So we don't really have much to say about that one other than it's just a reminder that God chose to create you. So if he created you, then there has to be a purpose for you. The second one is Psalm 139, 13 and 14. And they say, For you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. So we were made by the creator of the world. So why can we see beauty in everything else but not see beauty in ourselves? Because God created us as he created the birds in the sky. So we should feel or we should see beauty in ourselves like we see the beauty in the birds outside. I just think it's weird that we can look at like waterfalls and a sunset and rivers and flowers and stuff like that and say oh my gosh look how beautiful that is but and and those are all creations that god has made wonderful works and we are also part of that creation and so something to remember as we talk down on ourselves because we do yes yes we do the next verse is first or the next verses are first corinthians 12 12 through 15 for just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body though many are one body so it is with christ for in one spirit we are all baptized into one body jews or greeks slaves or free and all were made to drink of one spirit for the body does not consist of one member but of many if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. So a while ago I mentioned our purpose, and that's what the scripture just kind of points out to us, is that we were all created with a purpose. You have been made and chosen for a reason. We all have. And in order for us to find that reason, we need to do a lot of self-reflection, a lot of Bible reading, a lot of prayer. If we do that, we'll find what we're passionate about and what our gifts are that are from God and how we can use those to serve Him and glorify Him in our life. So I'm also going to read 1 Corinthians 18 through 20. But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as He chose. If you were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. So each of the parts of the body have the ability to perform different tasks. And just like how God created each one of us, we can all contribute to the kingdom. So we need to find out what part of the body we are and how we can use that to glorify God. And whenever you do that, then, not to really sound boastful or anything, but... The more you find out who you are and who God is and who you are in Christ, the more secure you feel. And like I said, I don't mean to be boastful or anything, but you're just more okay with yourself. And that's a comforting feeling. The next one is 1 Peter 2, 9, and it says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. God created everybody uniquely and purposefully to point back to him. And we all have different connections with different people and we're able to reach out to different people. For instance, somebody that's been adopted would be able to reach out to somebody else that's been adopted easier because they 
No, like they're they know better. what they're they know what they're going through mm-hmm. and how that how it affected them personally, and it could help that person more than somebody who doesn't understand that situation yes. fully. We all have our own unique ways to present the gospel through the situations that we've been through to help reach out to others. And and hopefully that will inspire them and give them a little more hope in their life. And we can glorify God through that. The next verses are Matthew 10, 29 through 31. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny and not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father? But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. Deep. So, if you've been watching our Wednesday videos, then you've probably heard this because in John MacArthur's book, Anxious for Nothing, he mentions this scripture a lot and um, he uses it to point out how if God takes care of the birds of the air and, and everything else that he created on this earth, then why wouldn't he take care of us so that there's no need for us to be anxious? And he uses it to point to that. But I say that to say, I don't think that we ever really fully understand how much God loves us. If you're like me, then you're probably a little too self-critical most of the time. But just know that God loves you so much that he humbled himself to suffer the punishment of sin for you just in order so that he could have a relationship with you for eternity. So... That's amazing to me. Whenever I think about that, you know, my initial reaction is I'm not worth that. And, you know, none of us really, we haven't done anything good to deserve that. We're full of sin. But God wanted a relation, wants to be in relationship with us so much that he was willing to give that for us. So that just brings into perspective how much we mean to God. So now I'm going to move into sharing a personal story about myself and it's about a retreat that I went to some time ago and I just feel like this was like an aha moment for me. So I wanted to share it with you guys because what the speaker said kind of really stuck out to me and kind of changed my perspective of myself. She was just given a speech on her feeling worthy and it started out with she was telling about how she was looking at herself in the mirror. What she was seeing, well, I don't really know how to put this in a pretty way, but like if any of you have been a mom, you've went through the cha- like seeing your body change from what it was to what it is now. And not to say that there's not beauty in that because there definitely is beauty in being able to create another human inside your body. That's an amazing, strange, weird, awesome thing that we're able to do. but. It changes your body and so when you're looking in the mirror afterwards even though you might have been really picky about your body before now it's way different than what it was and so there's a lot more things to point out and her son was standing there and he said something about mommy why are you crying I don't remember what she said that her response to that was but um, in the days following I think she was reading about the creation or something and anyway she shared about how um, how whenever God created something, he said it was good. When we look at ourselves and we pick about pick apart all the, what we consider bad qualities about ourselves, like what if God created that to be, a, like what if God sees that as a good quality in you? Because we're not all knowing. We don't know his plan. We don't know what he plans to use every little thing not. for. So like maybe that is, I mean, but anyways, that's that was a side tangent. Her main point was just that When we're picking at ourselves, we're basically telling God that he did a terrible job or that we think he messed up. And that just really, that perspective just really changed my heart about myself. Because like like we said at the beginning of this study, we can look at all the things that God has made and be like, oh wow, that's so beautiful. It's so intricate, so detailed. How awesome is this? And even some of the weirdest things sometimes I find beauty in, which (laughs) this is kind of, weird but like my husband makes fun of me for it but sometimes I look at like old dead trees and I'm like it's still cool Mm -hmm. like even though it's old and dead and deemed useless now like there's still a beauty in it and so I don't know I just feel like that store or that girl's testimony about how she should be, be be viewing herself and what that says about how she views 
God just really changed my perspective about myself. And I figured if that could change my perspective about myself, then maybe that would help somebody else see their self in different way. We have three different writings. They're all by C.S. Lewis. Lewis. And I'm going to read one that is called All Thinking. I would rather be what God chose to make me than the most glorious creature that I could think of. For to have been born in God's thought and then made by God is the dearest, grandest, and most precious thing in all thinking. I want this guy's mind. <laughs> like, who thinks, like, like the way that C.S. Lewis writes gets me a lot of times. It really makes me, it, like, takes makes me you, back and makes me Makes think. you think. Yeah. So then the second one is it's just a quote, and it says, when we want to be something other than the thing God wants us to be, we must be wanting what, in fact, will not make us happy. Wow. Yeah. So if we're not seeking what God wants in our life, and we're just purely following our fleshly desires, then we're actually following a path of things that are ultimately going to be bad for us or not as good as they could have been if we were slowly through sanctification becoming what God wanted us to be. Anyways, I thought that one was good. And the last one says, the question is not what we intended ourselves to be, but what he intended us to be when he made us. So we shouldn't focus on what we want ourselves to be because that's not the main focus. What we should be focusing on is what God put us here to do and at what he put us here to be and how we can glorify God. And just as a one more last time reminder, we just wanted to let you guys know that you are worthy and that God loves you and he created you for a purpose. You and are fearfully and wonderfully made. So that is the end of this Bible study. So we hope maybe this helps somebody and uh, maybe we shared some um, biblical truths with you that will help you to come to terms with who you really are and what your purpose is going to be in this world. And if you've already got that figured out, then maybe we inspired you to make that next step forward in serving God and finding what part of the body you are and how you are going to be best of service to him. We also post videos on Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays we're in the book Anxious for Nothing by John MacArthur and on Fridays we do fun videos. We just like to be silly and have fun and so sometimes it's makeup, fashion, food, DIYs, anything like that. Just something that we decide to do for fun that week. If you like our content, you can like and subscribe. And if you wanna be notified of when we upload, you can hit the little bell and it should send a notification to your phone. Other than that, we hope you guys have a good day, have a good week, and don't forget to shine. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.